Today we are driving two plug-in hybrid crossovers, the Toyota RAV4 Prime and the all-new Ford Escape plug-in hybrid. Now, I think both these vehicles represent pretty much the best of both worlds that you can buy on the market for an everyday vehicle that has a good amount of electric-only driving range and a really nice hybrid drivetrain. Let's talk about these cars, compare them inside and out. We'll take both for a drive and give you guys some kind of some thoughts on what they've been like to live with this week. I spent quite a bit of time in the Toyota RAV4 Prime. Uh, we've probably done about five or six videos on that. So if you want a full review on the RAV4, check that out. There's a few of them on my channel and I will also be filming a full review on the Ford Escape plug-in hybrid. So let's get some specs and general information out of the way. The RAV4 Prime will do 42 miles of electric only driving. The Ford Escape, 37 miles. RAV4 Prime is all wheel drive. The Ford Escape is front wheel drive only. You can get all wheel drive in the hybrid, but this plug-in hybrid is front wheel drive. It saves weight, saves cost, and it is a little bit cheaper. We have a Ford Escape SEL PHEV today, which is kind of the mid trim. It's around $35,000 MSRP. This is a RAV4 Prime XSE, which is about 42 grand MSRP. So not necessarily equivalence in trims. The equivalent to the RAV4 Prime XSE for the Escape would be the Escape Titanium. On the outside, this RAV4 Prime is a pretty good looking car. It's a little bit angular and more rugged looking than the Ford Escape, which has cleaner, smoother, more minimal lines. Maybe it looks a little bit more pedestrian too. Um, I've always thought that the RAV4 Prime looks like a Jeep and the Ford Escape looks like a Porsche Macan. So kind of an interesting note there, but I think they're both pretty good looking cars overall. Let's take a look on the inside. We have nice leather seats, pretty good set of features. This has a panoramic sunroof. Here's what the inside of the Escape looks like. A slightly lighter interior spec on this model and also a panoramic sunroof. Both vehicles have a pretty good amount of cargo space. RAV4 Prime gets a compact spare tire, which is really nice, some charge cables. This has the premium JBL sound system, um, even though it's not a super impressive sound system, and you get a little subwoofer back here. I think we have just about as much usable space back here as you should need in a crossover in this RAV4 Prime. Let's take a look at the Escape. Same story here, it's pretty spacious. Maybe not as much length between the back and the seats, but you could still fit just about whatever you want to back here. Unfortunately, no spare tire in this Escape plug-in hybrid. Not sure if you can spec one and change the location of the battery. For the record, the Ford Escape tailgate closes a lot quicker than the RAV4 Primes, which seems to just take ages. Back seat room in the Ford Escape is actually pretty decent. You have adjustable backrests that you have a lot of different angles that you can select, which is nice. The seats fold pretty much flat. And I actually found it a little bit easier to put a rear facing child seat in the back of this Ford Escape compared to the RAV4 Prime this week because the front seats don't protrude as much into the back seating area as they do in the RAV4 Prime. If you look right here, you'll see what I mean. Still though, that said, this is a really nice seating area in the back of the RAV4 Prime. Very comfortable, plush leather, a great view forward. I have a very nice amount of legroom in the back of this RAV4 Prime, even a little bit of space to put my feet under the front seats. I can see over everything pretty well. It's a pretty open, spacious, and good looking interior. For the Escape being a slightly smaller vehicle dimensionally on the outside, this back seat is actually pretty spacious and roomy. I'm seated behind myself again, five foot 10, and I feel like I have maybe a little bit more leg room and it's a little bit less tight in the back of the Sport Escape. Again, kind of splitting hairs because both vehicles are pretty spacious and comfortable on the insides. I have a good amount of headroom, a nice armrest right here, no heated rear seats like we get in the RAV4 Prime in this SEL Escape, but we do get a couple USB ports down there. Let's talk some more numbers. 221 horsepower in the Ford Escape going through the front wheels, a very smooth electronic CVT. Same deal for the RAV4 Prime, an eCVT, but 302 horsepower combined between the electric motor and gasoline engine. Um, RAV4 Prime definitely wins in the power department, but the Ford Escape is no slouch either. So what happens when your battery charge runs out? How efficient are these cars? The Escape gets 40 miles to the gallon combined on hybrid driving only. The RAV4 Prime, 38 miles to the gallon combined. 
and we've actually seen a little bit less in real world tests this week with the RAV4 Prime. It's just a little bit heavier and not as efficient as the Ford Escape. Let's hop inside the Ford Escape, start it up and show you around the front seat area. You're greeted by a fully digital gauge cluster when you get in. This is not Ford's most up-to-date sync system. This is still Sync 3. It's a little bit laggy, a little bit sluggish, but Apple CarPlay works really well. It's very responsive. We have a decent uh, B&O sound system in here. Though interestingly enough, um, you get a B&O logo here at the center, but nothing on the doors right here. I think the ergonomics in both cars are fantastic. Plenty of physical controls and buttons. Uh, I've actually really started to enjoy this rotary shifter this week. It's super easy and intuitive to use. You can kind of just change from park to reverse to drive on a fly, and you don't really have to think too much about it. All the button placement in this Escape is really nice. Again, the same as the hybrid. Really the only differences we have between this and the hybrid is we have a few different drive modes that we can select. So we can go between normal, eco, sport, slippery, snow, sand, assist, and choose between auto EV, all electric driving, save your charge for later, or you can charge the battery with the engine and the engine will kick on like that. I have really nice visibility in the scape. I'm seated pretty high up. I can see out of my rear quarters and rear view mirror pretty well. RAV4 Prime does have a uh, digital mirror, but again, higher trim in that XSE. Here's the charge outlet on the Ford Escape. I actually really like this because you just open the door and plug it in. Here's the RAV4 Prime's charge port. There's a little bit of an extra step. You have to pull this piece off and then you can plug it in. A little bit of a minor gripe in my mind. I would like to be able to just open up the door and plug it in and uh, taking this off, putting it on every time, just adds another step that I feel like isn't as necessary. And then I never know which direction to put it on when I'm done charging the RAV4 Prime. Just walking around these vehicles, you can see that dimensionally, they're really not that different. Um, there's not a huge size difference. On the inside, the interior space is actually pretty well packaged in the Ford Escape. I actually kind of prefer the back seat to the RAV4 Prime. It feels a little bit more open. There definitely isn't as much room behind the rear seats for cargo in the Ford Escape, but it makes up for it in room for people in the second row. You can see here on the RAV4 Prime, there's just a little bit more length back here to put stuff behind your passengers in the back. All right, I think that's a pretty good walk around on both these cars. Let's take the Escape Hybrid for a drive first, and then we'll go in and drive the RAV4 Prime. Now we have a 76% charge on the battery here in this Ford Escape. Here's what the reverse camera looks like. Nothing special, pretty standard. Nice rotating lines. And here there, it makes a little bit of a noise, letting you know that you are reversing. The RAV4 Prime is kind of spooky. When you put it in reverse, it makes a haunting uh, electric sound. You'll hear that later. Steering is super light on this Ford Escape. I mean, for the most part, this pretty much drives like the Ford Escape Hybrid, which we really enjoyed earlier this year. It's a little bit lighter weight. It's a little bit more nimble and athletic feeling than the RAV4 Prime. Not as comfortable, not as solid, not as hefty, but I actually really enjoy driving this Escape. It's kind of, it's a little bit more flickable. It's a bit more fun. We get a nice heated steering wheel and heated seats in this Escape plug-in hybrid SEL. And we're off. We're in electric only power now. If I push the accelerator down just past 60 kilowatts, the gasoline engine will turn on and you'll see the engine light there illuminate in white, not in orange. That's not a check engine light. <laughs> There's definitely not as much electric only power here in this Escape plug-in hybrid, whereas in the RAV4 Prime, you can pretty much drive that around in EV only mode and have enough acceleration for all of your needs.
So if we go in here and put it in full EV, all electric driving mode, I'll show you how much acceleration we have. I still think it's ample, but it's really only about 100 horsepower or so. Interestingly enough, the gasoline engine will not automatically kick on when you floor it. It'll ask you if you want to enable the engine by pressing OK. So there's a little bit of power, definitely enough to get around, but not nearly as quick or usable, as usable amount of power as the RAV4 Prime has. We're going to put us back into auto EV here. All right, so 221 horsepower, full throttle. very respectable amount of acceleration from this escape plug-in hybrid. Ford's done a pretty nice job tuning this engine and hybrid powertrain to blend very seamlessly between electric power and the gasoline engine kicking on. The CVT helps facilitate that very well. Pretty nice on the highway too, not a ton of wind noise, not a ton of road noise. We have a very nice radar guided cruise control system with lane keeping assist that'll keep you pretty well centered between the lines. One of my favorite things about this lane keep system is that it will actually start accelerating around a slower vehicle a lot quicker than most other systems, including the RAV4 Primes. So if as soon as you put your turn signal on, it'll start accelerating and you don't feel like you're holding up traffic in this car like you do in so many other adaptive cruise control systems, which is kind of nice. Let's see how this Escape Hybrid handles. pretty good. It's a lot flatter and more composed around corners than the RAV4 Prime. RAV4 definitely rides better. It's a lot more comfortable and cushier, but this Escape has a much more dialed in chassis. Um, it really kind of turns in a lot quicker. So if you want something to hustle around a back road, probably take this Escape plug-in hybrid over the RAV4 Prime. Brake pedal feels very natural, very progressive. There's a little bit of an eco coach with this Escape in that it'll show you how much power, how much regenerative braking power you've uh, retained on your full stop. And usually you'll end up with 99 or 100% of power returned to the battery when you come to a stop, which is nice. so quiet that sometimes you can't really tell when the gasoline engine kicks on to give you just a little bit of acceleration. It's pretty easy to get a good driving position in both of these cars. Though interestingly, both the Escape and the RAV4 Prime seem to have unusually high passenger seats without any adjustability to lower the passenger seating. So if you have a tall spouse or tall passengers, they might be a little bit comfortable if they're over or around six foot tall. All right, guys, well, those are some thoughts on the Ford Escape plug-in hybrid. Let's go drive this RAV4 Prime, and then we'll sum everything up with some final thoughts at the end of this video. See what I mean about that rotary shifter? Just smooth, seamless, easy. 
pretty quick steering rack too in this escape. Very focus like. And it'll even tell you how much time you have to charge the battery again on 240 versus 120. 1.4 hours on 240, 4.5 hours on 120 volt. Of course, we still have 61%, 18 miles left of our range on this battery. All right, let's take this RAV4 Prime out for a drive. So we spent a ton of time in these cars. They're super nice, super comfortable, very luxurious. Definitely carries a price premium over the Ford Escape, and it, it feels like a more expensive, higher-end vehicle. There's a little bit more leather on all the surfaces. There's a little bit more weight to all the controls. Um, it feels like a Toyota. It's a, it's a heavier, heftier RAV4, um, and uh, maybe a little bit better handling than the standard RAV4, but there's a bit more of a comfort and off-road oriented focus uh, here with the RAV4 Prime compared to the Ford Escape, which is a primarily an on-road vehicle. So we even have an off-road trail mode in this, which is nice. If all-wheel drive is important to you, the RAV4 Prime has that. Personally, I'm kind of of the mind that uh, for the sake of efficiency and cost and simplicity, front-wheel drive is pretty much enough for most people in the snow belt. But again, if you're going to go off-road, that probably won't cut it. And otherwise, though, a set of winter tires will probably serve your needs in a front-wheel drive vehicle. So besides what we've just talked about with the extra weight and heft from this RAV4 Prime, there are some differences in how these two vehicles drive. Namely, the power that you get out of this battery and electric motors in the RAV4 Prime. There is a lot more acceleration here in pure EV mode than the Ford Escape. It's actually kind of quick. So if we put us into full EV, all right, so we just press this button right here and we give it a boot full, that's what our acceleration looks like. It's not too bad. Brake fuel is about the same, easy to manage, regenerative braking and get most of our charge back. When we come to a stop, if we put us into auto, electric mode, hybrid mode, and give it some acceleration. This thing is actually pretty fast. 302 horsepower goes a long way when half or a good portion of that power is from the battery. You get instant throttle response, a little bit of torque fill until the CVT and the engine kicks on. Both of these cars have 2.5 liter four cylinders. There are a few more rattles in this RAV4 Prime, though this does have 10,000 miles on the odometer, and those are all probably pretty hard miles driven by journalists. I have excellent visibility in this car, really nice thin A pillars. I do like this digital rear view mirror. That is pretty cool. It looks like traffic is clearing up a little bit here, so we don't have to keep driving this like a hybrid. We can accelerate onto this on-ramp with some vigor. We'll even put it into sport mode. We get three drive modes, eco, normal, and sport. You even get paddle shifters and a sport shift mode in this RAV4 Prime though. It doesn't really do much. It just kind of keeps the revs up high artificially. Um, and most people aren't even gonna dip into these modes. You do get a trail mode that will help kind of break uh, wheels that lift up when you're driving off-road which is nice, and distribute torque to the opposite side of the axle. All right, off we go. <laughs> this thing is always surprisingly quick off the line. It's almost a little bit too fast for what the chassis can handle dynamically, though it does give you a really satisfying pull and shove out of corners. <laughs> we do have a couple roof rails on this RAV4 Prime today, so a little bit more wind noise than we would have without them. Radar cruise control, adaptive cruise, lane keep assist still works quite well on this RAV4 Prime. It's not as eager of a system to make passes like the Ford Escape is. So it's still quite usable on a long distance, on a road trip, if you want it. Uh, but 
I think the escape system eventually wins out in terms of usefulness just because you don't feel like you're holding traffic up as much. But ergonomically, both are very easy to use, easy to access. I kind of like how the RAV4 is, is on the right side. That just seems to be a little bit more of an intuitive side for me to engage everything. But all said and done, you'll get used to both systems pretty easily. Let's see how this RAV4 Prime handles. A lot more body roll than the Escape. Brakes feel a little bit less powerful. Steering's got a lot more heft to it. These are eco-oriented tires, so they don't have a lot of mechanical grip. But the straight line performance and acceleration out of this RAV4 really does present itself whenever you put your foot down. This is a pretty fast crossover, no matter how you cut it. So how can we sum up these two vehicles? Ultimately, kind of a cop-out answer, but I really don't think you can go wrong with either option here. I really have enjoyed driving this RAV4 Prime this week, and I've equally enjoyed driving the Ford Escape this week. I think if you wanna save a little bit of money, I would go for the Ford Escape. It's a great vehicle, super comfortable, decently fun and enjoyable to drive. Uh, it's super efficient. It gets better gas mileage than this RAV4 Prime does in hybrid mode. So if you've extended past the, that 37 mile range and you're doing a long road trip, you're gonna get better fuel economy in the Escape by at least a few miles to the gallon over this RAV4 Prime. This is not even as efficient as the standard RAV4 hybrid because of the extra weight here. So something to factor in, depends on how you're gonna be using these vehicles. If you do a lot of long distance driving, you may not even wanna bother with a plug-in hybrid system. You may just wanna get the standard hybrid vehicle, save some money, have a little bit of extra mechanical simplicity. Um, though with the tax credits applied, if you qualify for them, they really all come out to be about the same price as their hybrid equivalents. So all things to kind of consider. Ultimately, we've been averaging around 80 to 90 to 100 miles to the gallon in both of these cars with how we've been using them this week. We've mostly been doing shorter 30, 40 mile commutes with both vehicles and about half of our time in them is usually spent in battery only driving, which is pretty nice. I think most people would be able to pretty much drive either of these vehicles in mostly battery only operating conditions, which I think is fantastic. You could even charge at work if that's a possibility, charge up every night. Really the only disadvantage that I would say with a plug-in hybrid compared to a fully electric vehicle is that you are gonna feel obliged and feel the need to plug it in every time you drive it, every time you get home, unless if you're just going a couple miles into town or something. Um, and that is a difference where with a full EV, you may not need to plug it in every day, depending on how much you drive, especially if you have a range of 250 to 300 miles, depending on the time of year, the temperature, all that stuff. Uh, both of these definitely take a fuel economy hit and a range hit in the colder weather. It is about 41 degrees Fahrenheit today, and uh, we're seeing about maybe 20% less, 20 to 30% less range out of both of these vehicles, which is to be expected. Overall, though, I think a plug-in hybrid really does represent the best of all worlds because you can take it on a road trip, use gasoline, plug in or use a charge mode uh, when you need to. You can you know, use it to camp in or use it to uh, plug stuff into if you're taking it out and doing any outdoors activities. And then the rest of the time on a daily basis, you're just going to be able to plug this in every day. And chances are, mostly be driving it on electric power. And uh, I've got to say, both vehicles do a really nice job blending their electric motor and gasoline engine powertrains. They feel great. If you want all-wheel drive, you're gonna have to swing for a RAV4 Prime or an Escape Hybrid. Uh, it's a little bit of a shame that Ford didn't offer all-wheel drive with a plug-in hybrid variant. I think a lot of consumers will complain that the Ford Escape plug-in hybrid does not come in all-wheel drive. Personally, I think if you're just going to be driving that in the winter, you should get winter tires for your car either way, and you won't really be that much worse for wear. If you're going to be 
doing some camping, off-roading, both vehicles will probably get you to your sites, no problem. It's not like this RAV4 Prime has a ton of off-road capability. If you want something that's going to go off-road, get a <laughs> get a Ford Raptor or get a Toyota 4Runner. Um, ultimately, these are both fantastic options for daily driving, the commute. Uh, they have just about as much space as you could need out of a daily driver vehicle. They're priced well. I think the Ford Escape is a really nice budget option, and it probably won't have the same markups that the RAV4 Prime is experiencing right now in this current market, though who knows, that may change. Personally, I would be happy with either of these vehicles in my driveway. Um, anyway guys, that's a review on the plug-in hybrid Ford Escape and the RAV4 Prime. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. We'll post a full review on the Escape Plug-in Hybrid here in a few days. Thanks for watching. It's showing us here that on that drive, we got 69.9 miles to the gallon with a 78% EV drive ratio for 6.8 miles. Pretty good, not too bad. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up this video on the RAV4 Prime and the Ford Escape plug-in hybrid. Hopefully this was useful and you enjoyed experiencing both behind the wheel and just kind of seeing what they look like inside and out. Big thanks to Substitute Topher for bringing the Escape hybrid out today for me and just waiting in the car <laughs> the whole time while I fumbled over my review. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to be it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Take care.